whether or not I play basketball, I'm gonna make an impact. I didn't let basketball itself define who I was. If I can be a UCLA legend, then anybody can. I'm Russell Stong, this little kid from Northridge, California that found a way to walk on to the team. And you know, now the people are calling him the mayor of Westwood. <laughs>Today, I sit down with UCLA basketball walk-on turned star and fan favorite, Russell Stom. In this episode, I talk with Russell about his journey to getting onto UCLA basketball after not having an offer there after his senior year of basketball and talk about how he became the mayor of Westwood to so many fans, which landed him on the front of the LA Times. Russell's story is an inspiration to athletes all over looking to play at the next level. And he shares some great tips on how to get the attention of college coaches. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to support the channel by dropping a like and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this one and without further ado here's russell stong so growing up i'm an only child so no siblings primarily the sports i participated in were actually motocross and you know different martial arts i was very in my own zone and from a young age my parents were like you know he's probably got to get into some team sports so he can develop his social skills you know be able to cooperate my parents started looking around and actually i had a neighbor who's now you know my childhood best friend his mom came to my mom and was like oh you know there's a rec center down the street you guys should check out the basketball team brendan and Russ, they can play together, you know. So from there, you know, went to the local recreational center, which, which is called Mason Park, and, you know, played my first game, and I just fell in love with it. I really just started honing my craft as I grew up, went to a relatively prestigious high school for basketball, you know, competed for two state championships, undefeated league championship, but so I was just trying to work my way up, got a little bit of D2, local D3 interests, but I knew that I wanted a full college experience. Went through the college application process, you know, wrote all the essays, took all the tests. And once I got into UCLA, I really started narrowing down my options. And UCLA, I fell in love with. And most importantly, I fell in love with it, knowing that there was a large possibility that I would not be playing basketball anymore. Once I got into UCLA, I was able to get in contact with the associate head coach at the time, Dwayne Broussard. But they always told me, you know, it's a slim chance. They kept telling me, you could be a manager, you could be a video coordinator. One thing I just kept telling them was, I want to be a player for this team. I can contribute on and off the court you just have to give me an opportunity so yeah I was going through different interviews they saw me work out a little bit gave them some fill met with the squad and then there was sort of this dead period where they weren't really reaching back out to me I was kind of getting ghosted so then school rolls around and you know I'm, I'm a student I'm enrolled as a mechanical engineer at UCLA and that's sort of the life I'm embracing you know I'm joining the engineering club just trying to get involved in any way I can because one thing I, I told myself going to UCLA too was whether or not I play basketball I'm gonna make an impact you know so I went through this dead period where I was just regular engineer and finally I told him because they never said no and they didn't say yes so I took a leap of faith and I, and I reached out and said I don't think it's very fair that you're ghosting me I, I think you know man to man if, if it's a no then say no if it's yes then yes it was pretty ballsy to send that but it, it kind of worked out in my favor where they were like we're narrowing in on our decision within the coming weeks midterms roll around in early November and I remember it vividly I'm, I'm in Powell Library, which is our main library here at UCLA. And I'm studying for my first midterm for Physics 1A. And I get a call. I'm sitting in the library. I get a call from Coach Broussard. And, and he says, you know, Russ, we need you on the team. or you need you to practice tomorrow. And I said, all right. Right away, I just dropped everything. Screw the studying. I'm playing for UCLA basketball. And they got me signed up, you know, eligible to play the next day. And it, it was definitely an interesting track because I joined in late November, didn't have all the summer prep. And, you know, now I'm playing with the best basketball players in the nation. And we have our exhibition game coming up in two days. So it was it was an interesting joining of the group. But, you know, the rest is history. And I just try to make the most of that opportunity. For everyone who doesn't know, like, kind of what the walk-on process is, can you talk to me a little bit about, like, what the process was like as far as becoming a walk-on at UCLA? As far as, like, the intangibles of, like, how did you reach out to the team and to begin with? How are you communicating with them? When you sent that text to them, who were you sending that text to? Like, was that to the guys or is that the coaches? The beautiful thing about basketball and you know walking on specifically is everybody's story is different for me specifically my process was i just need to get a foot in the 
door. However, I can do it. The thing for me, I think that separated myself from other players was my academic prowess. And I was able to display, you know, a sense of character the four years that I was in high school. So I had those other intangibles aside from being, you know, a good practice player that can, you know, contribute on the court. I can also provide an example off the court. Honestly, the key after that was just staying ready and keeping persistent and knowing what I wanted. Talk to me about what were your hopes in becoming a Bruin, walking on this basketball team? Playing basketball was always my passion. And I knew that I wanted to c continue playing. I wasn't done living my dreams. So once I decided I, I wanted to go to UCLA as a competitor, you know, you have to believe that you're the best player. You have to believe that you're capable of playing with the best players in the country. And I thought I was. I was playing with my teammates who were, you know, competent players and we were succeeding. By the time college admissions in like that process sort of came around, I realized that UCLA was more the culture I wanted to be around. You know, obviously I knew about the storied program. I knew the expectations that it came with being a UCLA basketball player. Coming in as a walk-on and striving for that position was a, a dream within itself to even be on, on a team, to be even in the conversations with basketball greats like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Walton, Kevin Love, Russell Westbrook. Whether I'm playing 40 minutes a game or zero minutes a game, just to be even part of that brotherhood was a dream within itself. A big shout out to Bare Bottom Clothing for sponsoring this video. With summer now upon us, it's time to enjoy the great outdoors and relax in the California sun. As a swimmer, I love heading out to the beach with my friends and enjoying some of my new board shorts from Bare Bottom Clothing. But not only do they have some of the best beach wear, Bare Bottom Clothing is for every occasion. From rocking their windbreaker on a cold San Francisco day, to their great fitting and incredibly soft shirts, to sports games with all of your friends, or even just rocking some of their comfortable shorts when I'm working from home while still trying to look a little professional. My favorite part about their board shorts is that they're super fast drying, which allows me to get back on the road and enjoy the rest of my day after a long day at the pool or the beach. You never know what the summer will have in store for you, which is why you not only need clothes that look good, but they're quality material as well, so you can continue wearing them over and over again. And don't get left behind because you don't have the right clothes. It's time to step up your style and enjoy the summer. I love the clothes and you guys are as well. Make sure to check out the description down below for a special discount code for all of my subscribers. And without further ado, let's get back to the video. Once you got on the team, what was your role and kind of how did you come into your role on the team? I would definitely say my role has developed as I've developed as a player, as I've developed as a person. I would say each year, honestly, my role was different in terms of like the leadership I could provide and the mentorship that I could instill in, in younger guys. The thing that remained consistent about my role, I feel like, was being able to provide an example on and off the court and you, and you touched on it you know Jaime and all, all my teammates recognize that I'm putting in the same work as them although I don't have necessarily the professional straight path that they have where you know the NBA is actually in sight or overseas is really a, a tangible thing that they can achieve but I'm still here putting in the work succeeding in the classroom so it's really just showing that you can do it all even though I'm not necessarily going to the next level if anything that should be a motivation because if I'm able to do it all then you, you can do it all. Talk to me a little bit about like what your relationship is like with Coach Cronin. I've seen a lot of quotes of him, you know, giving you lots of kudos for being that that role player on the team, always working hard. And talk to me a little bit about what his coaching style is like. So I was always used to getting yelled at. And the biggest lesson I learned from that was, you know, you got to listen to what they're saying, not necessarily how they're saying it to you. And you can't take it personal, especially Coach Cronin. He, he loves to win. Like he's a winner. And when he gets it's in game mode, practice mode. He's just, you know, go, go, go. Gotta do what I say, do it this way. And this is how we're gonna win, which is true. You have to buy in. And that's why we ended up winning, you know, later in my career. But when you're not used to that coaching style, you take things a little personal when he yells at you, things like that. When you look at our relationships off the court, cause coach Cronin, very personal and I think the greatest thing about Coach Cronin is he cares about each player individually as a person and he wants them to develop as a man, as an as an individual, to be a successful person, not necessarily a basketball player. And off the court, he's always looking for opportunities for all of us. In the era of the NCAA transfer portal, there's two kind of mindsets. You can either be a big fish in a small pond or a small fish in a big pond. Talk to me about like why you chose to stick it out at UCLA, why UCLA is important for you, and why you didn't choose to 
go somewhere else kind of in this era of the transfer portal. The thing for me is, is I looked at college more of a platform to set up my future and I didn't let basketball itself define who I was. Everything included, I'm more than just a basketball player. So for me, although basketball was this amazing passion and the dream that I had and I knew I wanted to be a part of it, especially at the collegiate level, there was, you know, something in the back of my mind saying well, you can't base your entire college experience off of you know being able to put the ball through a hoop like i said earlier i knew i was going to be happy at ucla without basketball i knew i was going to make an impact i just didn't know how talk to me like what nil has been like for you as a ucla basketball player in today's day and age of college sports it's definitely interesting because i experience you know both sides of college basketball with and without nil and right now it's kind of the wild west everybody's figuring it out by the time nil came my career was you know i was in my last one or two years so i knew there wasn't a ton that i could do with it necessarily in terms of building this massive brand but i knew i could have some fun with it companies started reaching out little companies and the thing about it too at least for me i always love being connected i love new experiences so a lot of the nil deals that i was getting with these smaller companies you know to come and visit or, or post them or try out their new food or try these new jewelry pieces like they were things i would do for free in the past because i enjoyed doing it recently i've been named to the advisory board of, of something called the bruin fan alliance and basically they are a student athlete led nil collective then there's these subcommittees that take this pool of money that is part of a charitable organization tax deductible basically we can create events that put bruins out in the community whether it's helping underprivileged kids we had our entire team go to compton and put up new backboards and refurnish this park by my count correct me if i'm wrong you scored nine total career points in your your time at UCLA. Your impact on on the court isn't going to be what your team remember you to buy, not what the fans are going to remember you by, not what your coaches are going to remember you by. What do you hope that your legacy on UCLA basketball will be? Like I mentioned earlier, to even be in the conversation with all of these great legends that happen to be Bruins, for my legacy, if I even do have a legacy, I just hope that I'm an inspiration for people and can show that, you know, whatever you set your mind to, whatever you want to achieve in life, you just have to dream, believe it, and achieve it. If I can be a UCLA legend, then anybody can. I'm Russell Stong, this little kid from Northridge, California that found a way to walk on to the team. And, you know, now the people are calling him the mayor of Westwood. Talk to me about your favorite UCLA basketball memory or favorite story from your time on the team. I feel like the cop-out answer is to talk about, you know, me scoring or the three that I hit or, you know, my first points or going to the final four. But, you know, the best memories were things you don't really think about. Having the guys over for Fast Bros tournaments or playing chess or working out at the at the beach courts. It's like all the little things there and really just embracing all the moments as brothers, as teammates. Those are the things that really hold dear to my heart. Every single day as a UCLA Bruin, particularly a basketball player, is never a bad day. A huge shout out to Russell for coming on and sharing his inspiring journey that cemented him in UCLA basketball history. If you guys like these videos or learn something today, then consider subscribing to my channel. If you want to see the full extended interview with Russell, join my membership group down below to help support the channel. I'll see you guys next week.